Alright, how's it going fellow astronauts and kerbonauts depending which solar system we are part of and welcome to version 0.22 of Kerbal Space Program. Now 0.22 is the addition to Kerbal Space Program which adds in science, experiments, and starting up career mode which is something we've been looking for back in 2011 when the game dropped. Although I am fairly new to the game I have been learning kind of quickly if that doesn't sound, if that sounds somewhat humble. Anyways, um, with career mode we have a tech tree now and this tech tree has us go through all these stages of getting new material starting off with the bare minimum as you can see me working with right here we just have the bare minimum command mark pod or command pod mark one and we have all these little oscar tanks man these things man should get us somewhat far and if you can't tell already this is post commentary this is my first attempt at post commentary and i felt like just playing Kerbal space program you know just getting some game time in and trying out the new career mode was the best thing and then going afterwards and you know adding in my commentary because you know everybody loves to hear some good commentary with Kerbal Space Program. At least I know I do. So this first rocket design is using all the basic parts we can aside from the struts because uh, you do not have decouplers, radial or just normal stack decouplers with the earliest uh, stuff you unlock in career mode as soon as you start off. So what you have to do is you have to do explosive decoupling or however you want to call it which is basically where you have to have the engines, um, you have to ignite the solid rocket booster above the other solid rocket booster to overheat it and explode it off. Now uh, a word of caution, if you do try and do that and um, one engine is still on for quite a while, it'll usually cause your entire spacecraft to blow up, which if you want to get far in Kerbal Space Program probably isn't the best thing, although Jebediah Kerman will <laughs> 9 times out of 10 tell you to blow things up because that's just what he's all about. And coincidentally, if you didn't see the name of uh, this world, this is uh, Jeb, the real Jeb. So yes, we are the real Jebediah, this is Jebediah speaking right now, I am your captain Jebediah Kerman. Anyhow, so when we do off our first launch, basically um, in order to grab science, grab science of that, if science is tangible, what you really have to do is you have to perform experiments in the form of EVA experiments, which is where you get your Kerbal and you get them out of the um, compartment, his capsule, and you do an EVA report. Or um, as you can see me doing right here, just right clicking on the, the capsule itself and doing some crew reports inside, you have to have a bit, you have to have a communitron or a, a big satellite dish in order to transmit the data. Now the hardest thing earlier on in Kerbal Space Program to do with uh, science is um, you don't have solar panels and the only way to generate electricity to use to transmit your science which costs a fair amount of electricity. I believe it's about like 20 units of electricity or however you want to call it. Uh, 20 units of electricity and electricity can't be uh, generated unless you have your engines on. So if we're just sitting here at the launch pad doing some basic experiments to get back some new data to uh, HQ at, over at the research and development it will take quite a lot of time, not to mention a lot of power just sitting there as you see me run out of. But as soon as we get going, we're developing or we're generating uh, an electric charge, which helps us get in some brand new electricity to use for some new science. Now, as you can probably already assume, we are able to get into a, not exactly a stable orbit, a relatively low one. I'm, I'm guessing the best you could do with this rocket, which I didn't do in this case, was uh, about 90,000 meters. I don't even believe I got above 80,000. I tried to circularize the orbit, but it really didn't get too far. And even trying to do some explosive surge here didn't even work all that well the second one didn't go out under and I was like what's going on here so the second one just blows up and I'm left with dead weight right here some extra thrusters that are just sitting there along for the ride not helping with science or anything whatsoever and unfortunately with our first flight right here our only form of science is to EVA report or just do a crew report and then transmit it back using the communitrons you can see right here now I do believe this mission did reel in quite a lot of science I believe we got around uh, 30 units of science. I'm not even sure. What is the unit for science? Is it measured in Ks for knowledge? I don't even know. That could be... Uh Okay, never mind. That's already a taken unit by the SI unit. What is that one temperature? I think it's Kelvin's. Yes, Kelvin's. So uh, I never mind. Kelvin K is already taken. Maybe it should be KL for knowledge. That that is the unit for science from here on out. So a ton of knowledge. That is 2,000 KLs. There you go. Fantastic. We already we're going to go propose that one. I'm pretty sure Jebediah, as long as you blow something up, is fine with that. 
Now, in, in spite of myself here, I was doing so much research. I was trying to get in all the science I could. I forgot to do my gravity turn around 10,000 meters, and I was already kind of at a disadvantage here. I was running low on fuel. I was carrying dead weight, and this mission was just a bit of a... It was not very successful. I mean, I'm not really used to working with these parts as much as, say, someone who uh, just tried to start from the ground up without using big um, Rocco Max orange tanks from the start and doing asparagus staging and all. But uh, doing this stuff, this is Kerbal Space Program in its infancy and quite frankly I like it it's really interesting to try and work with uh, new stuff in the game not ne not necessarily new stuff but uh, you know the baby parts not I don't even know what to say about that the the smallest parts you can use in career mode those parts that get you to the moon well not in this case but uh, <laughs> we tried our hardest with our, uh, our little Oscar tanks and our command mark pod now something that you'll see me do in the future I don't believe it's right now but when I go back and do some more after we get all of our um, research points after this uh, something that I found helps you uh, if you're new to this and you're just watching this out of uh, you know the kindness of your heart to find out some more about career mode uh, the capsules the uh, cupulas whatever you're using um, they do provide torque and torque is how you turn your spacecraft without RCS or any other power source like winglets or anything like that and if you mount some of the uh, the command pods on top of your exterior uh, your fuel tanks and everything say you have three more fuel tanks or may, they may even be solid rocket boosters you EVA your crew and then you send those up those serve for extra torque which means you are your ship turns more readily despite extra weight and parts that's something I didn't do here because I didn't learn about it quite yet that was something I just tried I was like oh boy let's put, put a bunch of Kerbins in there but I forgot to put our Kerbals in the in the um, the the command pods so I wasn't able to get research but they did add for a whole lot more torque which was something that was really helpful so once we get ourselves up to about 70,000 meters or so we do some research you know, since we're not developing or we're not generating any power, I always say developing power. Since we're not generating any power, we're unable to transmit for long. We can get about three or four reports in before the, that orange message is like, oh no, you are all out of power. And before you know it, we are already back in Kerbal and Kerbin. I always get those two mixed up. I decided to do a splashdown for our first landing because we do not have landing gear of any type. And I was like, oh boy, if we land in water, we can take a surface sample. And that sample did actually manage to see us through. So once we do actually manage to get back, to the Kerbal Spaceport or uh, the Kerbal Space Center. Yes, that is it indeed. We get to find out that we got quite a hefty amount of science. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was upwards of 30 or so science. And then this is where we really began to dwell into, you know, Kerbal Space Program in terms of all of the new parts and stuff, the tech trees. So I thought you had to buy parts individually. I saw 15,000 CCs. And I was like, oh no. But it actually turned into you just had to go through and buy the entire, uh, the, the square representation presenting that tech part. So for example, um, right here, we're going down the right stage. I'm, ta I'm just taking a look at all my parts because uh, through experience and just messing around with career mode beforehand, I found that you want to get experience, I mean, not experience, you want to get experiments and power development, and power generation as quickly as possible. So this means you want to unlock new experiments and you want to get solar panels and battery packs as quickly as you can. And that's the route I fortunately went. You can't see ahead unless you buy that stage. So thankfully, we managed to find ourselves with the right path, but we did not have enough science to find ourselves with battery packs or anything else than that. So going to our second launch right here, I decided to get rid of all the thrusters and move on to a new design. That design being moving on with at first structural struts to add everything up, and I remember we don't have any decouplers, so I thought that would be rather stupid, and the rocket would flex far too much, bringing up thrust and all that stuff. So at, in the end, I just decide to put all of the thrusters on the main rocket itself. Now, ambitiously enough, as you can probably see, I uh, put on landing struts. Landing struts for Kerbin? No way, no way. I wanted to go to the moon. Not the moon, but the mun. Yes, the real mun, not the fake moon. Everyone knows that's just a fake thing in the sky, but everybody on Kerbin knows that the mun is real. But uh, we tried, I was ambitiously enough seeking to go to the mun with this rocket. Now, I'm sure that is entirely possible with fuel lines and, and all that, and maybe a nuclear rocket or two. But uh, with this current technology, I do not believe that'd be very economic or you know uh, efficient whatsoever 
But uh, speaking of efficiency right here, we have our four cupulas, our four command pods that are going to give us additional torque and make sure that they're unmanned because you are going to be dropping them at some point because otherwise you'd just be carrying dead weight. But we do have our four staged or our five stage rocket right here. We've got our four external tanks that are feeding into some LV. I'm not sure if those are 909s. I think we don't have the 909s yet because those have thrust vectoring which help with your thrust and everything. So these are just the basic of the basics. But hey, we are getting there and we are doing even better. Now, unfortunately, we do manage to get into a circular orbit with this, this uh, spacecraft right here. We don't have any suborbital trajectories. We actually managed to get into a full-fledged circular orbit. The only problem with that is, despite being higher up in eva and all that stuff, we did not get enhanced science from it. As a matter of fact, I believe I pulled in less science from this mission than I did the last mission. Now, I, I'm not sure if this is the case, but um, if if science is a tangible thing within the game in certain areas, for example, in Kerbin, like if you're uh, just running around on the uh, ground picking up ground samples, I think they lose their science value after you do a couple of them. So right here, you're going to see like uh, all of my my science experiments going down and EVAing and uh, doing IVA crew reports. I believe they're losing their value because we've just kind of learned everything we can about this area, so the science just keeps going down and down. Now, speaking of science, we did manage to research another science experiment, that being the little uh, cup on the side, cup, dome, cylinder, whatever you want to call it, that thing right there on the side, which is a goo canister. Now, the goo canister, I'm not sure if it sucks in goo or just has goo in there and you see how it reacts to its environment. Anyways, there is goo around or in this canister, but this canister allows you to do some more science experiments, and oh yes, science experiments that's the whole reason we're having jebediah risks risk risk yeah no risk there we go yes indeed risk 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 however you want to say it dictionary is not a real thing on Kerbin. but uh anyways the goo canister helps us find ourselves with some new science points some new science value and that is exactly what we're looking for more science more parts more places to go and in jebediah's case more stuff to blow up now i don't believe anything blew up on this mission and something that i managed to cut out earlier was uh I was doing an experiment. I was just going to send up a typical rocket, you know, with some asparagus, not asparagus staging, but uh, with the explosive surgery staging. And it blew up. It just collided with itself and it all exploded. And I was very sad because all that science was gone, but Jebediah managed to survive. So yes, experiments go on. So in time, we do find ourselves in an orbit around Kerbin. We're just adjusting it right here with our nice little, uh, our nice little command module here. It's got some landing struts, everything to land on the MUN, right? Well, unfortunately, I saw early on enough that we would not have enough fuel we would have enough fuel i do believe to get into an encounter but by that time we would be out and as soon as we got to the mun we would be unable to make ourselves into a circular orbit i'm not even sure if we get into a highly centric elliptical orbit that probably would be stretching it anyways i saw that we were having an issue so i just decided to deorbit and then find our way back to curb and you know landing in the desert far far away or is this mountainous not really sure either way we find our way back to curb and we are able to get in our sweet sweet science all that sweet goo collected and all the eva and iva crew reports are documented and they're sent back to hq where they are examined and converted into science points because we have we've gone far beyond energy and physics that now we have a machine that converts into science so once we manage to get back to the kerbal spaceport since everything is getting a whole lot more expensive we are actually unable to buy i don't think we are able to buy more than one of these new units but we do manage to go with um i'm not really sure what I go with. I'm trying to look in a little window here to see what we buy. I do think we buy onto the new science experiments, which includes, um, I'm not sure if we get the science module yet. I'm pretty sure that's what I buy. The very, the one in the very bottom right hand corner, I'm pretty sure is the one I go with. But uh, do be warned, this is a tedious process getting science and all. So make your decisions wisely because as far as I know, you can't unresearch. But yeah, right here we get our new science unit and then we look into what's a, what's to come. And that is, those are solar panels and battery packs. And that is all the stuff that we are looking for. But that is really all for this very first episode of Kerbal Space Program Career Mode Point 22. Thank you very much for watching everybody. And I will see you all very soon.